Somewhat seedy fellow you see here just disembarking from the Manchester train in London is myself, Aristide Pujol, a French citizen of unlimited resources and no money. The circumstances brought me to England, where I secured a post as professor of an academy for young ladies in Manchester, a position I lost rather abruptly this afternoon by stumbling over a pluperfect subjunctive in the presence of the headmistress. Although you see me now at a low ebb in my somewhat checkered life, I am sustained by one deep conviction. Something always turns up. Sacre mille cochons. Quel chien de climat. I'm from Mr. Smith, sir. Well, I'm delighted to hear it, my friend. You are the French gentleman from Manchester. I believe I heard uh, you yes, uh, yes, I am indeed. Will you come this way, sir? Mr. Smith has sent his motor car for you. He has? Well, that's very kind of Mr. Smith. The hot water can, sir. Thank you, my good fellow. Mrs. Smith isn't back yet from the city, sir, but Miss Christabel is expecting you in the drawing room. Miss Christabel, huh? <laughs> Un moment, my boutonnier. Merci. Good evening, Monsieur Le Baron. Mademoiselle. Enchanté. I'm so glad Thomas spotted you at the station. We'd never seen you. We couldn't give him any description. Oh, your chauffeur seems to be a very intelligent fellow, mademoiselle. He heard me extricating the weather in French, and he recognized me as once as a Frenchman. <laughs> Tis a horrid night, isn't it? Not anymore, mademoiselle. It is a most beautiful night. Well, uh, Father will be here soon. Uh, shall we sit down? Thank you. But first, uh, would you deign to accept this English rose as a token of my respectful admiration and homage for a lovely English rose? Really, Monsieur Le Baron? You know, an Englishman would never have thought of that. Oh, I'm sure he would, Mademoiselle, but he, he would not have had the cheek to do it. But you know, when men pay compliments to English girls, they usually get laughed at. Englishmen, yes, because they always think over the compliment for so long it becomes adult like the uh, stale egg. But we of Provence pay tribute to beauty straight from our hearts. And what comes from the heart cannot be ridiculous. I'd always heard that a Frenchman makes love to every woman he meets. But naturally. If they are pretty, of course, what else are pretty women for? Otherwise, they might as well be hideous. I wonder what my fiancé would say if he heard you. Your fiancé? There's his photograph on the table. The Honourable Percy Ralston, MP. Member of Parliament? He takes his parliamentary duties very seriously. Yes, I'm sure that he does. He was to have dined with us tonight, but at the last minute a late meeting was called and he had to attend. But anyway, he's coming over later and I'm sure you'll get on famously. People with a common interest in art always do, don't you think? Oh, yes, of course, of course, yes. 
That was how Father and Percy first became acquainted. He has a beautiful collection of paintings down at his place in Hampshire. Mm. Ours is considered quite good, too. Very nice. I thought you were a kind of sir. I am. Well, uh, Father will be down in a minute, and I must dress for dinner. I'll ask Marie to show you to your room. Mademoiselle. I have been too bold. I don't know. I've never met a Frenchman before. Uh, Mademoiselle, then you have no idea what you have missed. And what delights await you. to see you. My little girl has been singing your praises. Mademoiselle is too kind. She's a good girl, is Chris. Bless her. Takes after her mother more than she does me. Lucky for her. Nature hath lost the mold where she her shape did take. Or else I doubt if nature could so fair a creature make. A poet too, eh? Well, you'll find us just ordinary folk, Baron. But I can give you a good cigar. And a decent bottle of wine. It's only in England, you know, you get drinkable champagne and cigars fit to smoke. And I can give you a glimpse of a fine English home. You haven't a word for home in French, eh? Perfectly, monsieur. No. In France, the men all live in the cafes and the women, uh, saving the respect of mademoiselle, of course. Well, uh, the women, the less said about them, the better. <laughs> I'm sure Monsieur Le Baron is only teasing Papa. You speak without experience, my girl. England's the only place, eh, Baron? Oh, I won't say Paris has not its points, but you get tired of the folly bourgeois and all that sort of thing, eh? Uh, but Paris has her serious side, too. Monsieur, you are forgetting the uh, tomb of Napoleon. Ah. Papa has never taken me to Paris. Time enough when you're a married woman, my girl. Dinner is served, sir. There is nothing more gratifying than to pass for a fool in the eyes of an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me. How is our dear old friend Jules Dancourt? Jules. Oh, Jules, très bien. But he suffers terribly at times from the gout. So do I, confound it. Ah, he speaks of you often, mon ami. Mm, tears in his eyes. <laughs> Men cry in France, my dear. They also kiss each other on the cheek, eh? Ah, but when they kiss the ladies, mademoiselle. Tell us about your um, chateau, monsieur le baron. Uh, does it have a moat and a drawbridge and everything like a real castle? Uh, which one do you mean, mademoiselle? Uh, I have two, you know. The one in Languedoc, where you live in seclusion. Oh. I somehow can't imagine the Baron living in seclusion anywhere. Tell us about your paintings, all your priceless pictures. Oh, yes. <laughs> the paintings, uh, it's a noble collection. Uh, Raphael, Michelange, Reynolds. How magnificent. If we go to France for our honeymoon... It is yours, mademoiselle, for as long as you care to stay. <laughs> I accept. Now, I know you two have much to discuss, so if you excuse me. Come. Now, I'll show it to you. Ah. 
I think our friend has done a truly outstanding job this time. Ah, but uh, does he not always? Ah, but this time I think even you are in for a surprise. Well, one thing for sure, it will not be the first time. Magnifique. A genuine Coro, eh? Oh, without a doubt, monsieur. Isn't that fellow Gottschalk amazing? If anyone can tell me the difference between this and a genuine Coro, I'll eat my hat. And all for eight pounds. Eight pounds? It's amazing. Now that you've seen it, what do you think we ought to ask for it? I suggested 3,000, but uh, of course you're the owner, you know. You're going to miss it off the walls of that, that historic chateau of yours, eh? Yeah. Bless me if you didn't almost make me think that was a real place. Mm. Oh, 3,000 pounds at least, Mr. Right, right. Young Ralston thinks he knows a lot. He's got the money, he can afford it. And he'll come into millions when his old man dies. He'll be Lord Ralston. And we can palm off another masterpiece or two on him, eh? <laughs> Has he seen it yet? Seen it and considers it a work of art. And he's very grateful to me. And the money is almost in the bank. Mm. Now, uh, about your own commission. Shall we say, uh, 400? Five. Well, I engineered the whole thing, you know. Mm. All right. I like you. You're the first Frenchman I've ever met with a sense of humor. Done. Sir? Yes? No, oh, excuse me a Je moment. an imposter. Who am I? I, my dear friend, am the Baron of Je Ne Sais Quoi. You're an infernal imposter. Hmm. And this gentleman, this distinguished member of the Légion d'Honneur, uh, to whom I have not had the pleasure of being presented. I, monsieur. I am Monsieur Poupieu. Agent of Braunberger et Compagnie, art dealers of Paris. Poop you. I thought you might be the Baron. <laughs> baron, there's no blasted Baron. Are you Poop you or is he Poop you? That's all I want to know. Monsieur, c'est moi. I would not have the name of Poop you for anything in the world. Poop you. <laughs> Monsieur? No, my name is Aristide Pujol. Soldier of fortune, at your service. And how the blazes did you get here? Very simple. One might say with the simplicity of great art. I asked you... Your servant, monsieur, he met me at Houston Station. Where were you? I missed my train. Oh. Lamentable on such a night as this, huh? <laughs> Your servant asked me if I am the French gentleman from Manchester. I am. He tell me that Mr. Smith has sent a motor car for me. I think it is very hospitable of the kind Mr. Smith. I enter the motor car. Et voila. Well, you can clear out and be double quick about it. Et voila. Oh, I beg you, do not be too impulsive, my good-natured old friend. No, I am very comfortable here. You have the charming daughter and the luxurious house. I am very comfortable here. And I intend to stay. Well, we'll see about that. You rang, sir? Send Thomas up. Yes, sir. Now, are you going? Or are you going to wait and be kicked out? Oh, kick me out, my friend. But I am afraid that your so lovely daughter and the Honorable Percy MP, well, they might be shocked to learn that Monsieur Gottschalk was paid only eight pounds to paint that 3,000 pound masterpiece by Coral. Oh, no! Blackmail, eh? Precisely. 
You, 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 rogue, you! Oh, what do you want? You sent for me, sir. Clear out! Yes, sir. You were saying, Mr. Smith? You blasted rogue, you! Well, I seem to be in congenial company, huh? <laughs> and I doubt if your friend, Monsieur Pepe, uh, poop you! you. Well, I doubt if he has any more scruples than he has a right to wear this ribbon of the Légion d'honneur. Tiens, monsieur. How much will you take to clear out? I will take 500 pounds to stay in. To stay in? Precisely. You see, my friend, you cannot do without me now. Your daughter and your servants know me as Monsieur Le Baron. Logique, n'est-ce pas? <laughs> By the way, what is my name? And where in Languedoc is my historic chateau? Baron de Mireille. Chateau de Mireille. Merci mille fois, mon ami. It is a pleasure to deal with a man of intelligence. <laughs> we French are realists. I'd like to wring your blasted neck for you. Hello. There is nothing to do, Monsieur Smith. Very well, very well. But you'll sign a receipt implicating yourself in this deal. You're not going to put me in the cart later on? Anything at all to oblige. Well, mon cher, you had better go. Mm, Monsieur Smith will no doubt send you a small check. Pardon? What is this charlatan talking about? Why should I go out in the wet at this hour? Because you missed your train, mon ami. And thus you no longer have the role to play in this expensive farce. Is that not so, Mr. Smith? You'd better go, Fabio. An instant. I believe I was invited for the night. Correct me if I am wrong in this assumption. Mon ami, what is the discomfort of a night in a hotel, eh? A few hundred pounds. A few hundred pounds? Qu'est-ce que vous chantez là? You imagine I will be content with a few hundred pounds? You'll be lucky if you get anything at all, you blundering fool. You didn't have sense enough to catch a train. As for you, I'd like to ring your blessed neck Calm here. yourself, mon ami. Calm yourself. Am I interrupting? Not at all, my dear. Mademoiselle, you appear like a sunbeam out of cloudy skies. This is Monsieur Poupieu. Enchanté, mademoiselle. Mm -hmm. Monsieur Poupieu is the eminent art expert from Paris. As he is in London, your father thought that perhaps the Honorable Percy would welcome his opinion on my coro. I'm sure he will. But I know he's fallen in love with it. Oh, Percy, my boy! Good evening, sir. Your little girl was beginning to worry about you. Good evening, my dear. Awfully sorry I was detained. Percy, let me present the Baron de Marais. Baron, this is the Honorable Percy Rolston, MP. Charmed. How do you do? And this is Monsieur Poupieu, the eminent art expert from Paris. I thought you might like to have his opinion on the picture while he was here. It's a capital idea. Thank you very much, sir. Un plaisir, monsieur. If I may say so, monsieur, you are extremely fortunate to have this opportunity to acquire this great masterpiece. Yes, indeed. Quite exquisite. Never seen finer, eh? Monsieur le Baron tells us his respected grandfather bought it personally from Corot. N'est-ce pas, Monsieur le Baron? Oh, oui. Uh, in commission. Hmm. My grandfather was a patron of Corot. Observe. It is painted in the beginning of Corot's later manner, 1864. There is the mystery which, when he was an old man, became uh, a mere trick. Zut, I should have advised Monsieur le Baron to put it up for auction at Christie's. It would fetch at least uh, 5,000 pounds. Well, really, that's more than I should feel disposed to give. I, I believe you mentioned something between three and 4,000 pounds. Right, but of course I have nothing to do with this, you see. Nothing whatsoever. You wanted a coro, and I was able to put you on to one. But as to the price, well, that's up to the Baron. Will you accept 3,000 pounds, sir? For a picture like this? No, monsieur, I will not accept 3,000 pounds for it, on no account. I don't want to butt in, but I believe that's the figure you mentioned yourself. Mademoiselle, do you like this picture? Oh, I love it. Then that is all that matters. 
I don't follow. What has that to do with the Everything, my young friend, everything. You see, Mademoiselle loves the picture, therefore it is priceless. Monsieur Le Baron is a terrible flatterer. Now, let's stick to the point. The Honorable Percy wants to buy this picture, and you want to sell it? Monsieur, you will admit that this picture is mine. Of course. And you, Monsieur, you will acknowledge that it is my property? Obviously. Eh bien, I have changed my mind. I will not sell the picture. That's rather an odd way of doing business, I must say. Wait. My dear, dear. Um, 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 my young friend, listen to me. I must confess something to you. Baron! This confession is of the heart. I have fallen desperately in love with Mademoiselle. I say, sir, how dare you? Oh, monsieur, I dare. For prudence and love go not together. But I would not take Mademoiselle away from you, <laughs> even if that were possible. No, my love is hopeless. But even hopeless, it is a great joy. And so I will not sell the picture. I give it to you as a wedding present. This is madness! I give it to you, mademoiselle, in gratitude for the delight of your smile. And to you, monsieur, that it may remain forever as a reminder that love must be fostered with gentle words and sweet attentions, that it must be on the lips as well as in the heart. It is yours. Hello, il est fou. Have you taken leave of your senses? My dear Baron, that's awfully generous of you, but I, I couldn't possibly accept it. I should think not. Well, then I shall put it under my arm and take it back with me to Languedoc. <laughs> I want a word with you. Excuse me. Percy, darling. I should like you to accept it. Not just for the painting. You understand. With gentle words and sweet attention. You're going back into that room this minute and settle this matter exactly as we arranged. I regret, monsieur. How would you like me to break your neck? And how would you like me to break the engagement of your daughter with the rich and honorable Percy Ralston MP? You wouldn't dare. Oh, I would deeply regret the necessity of having to do it, monsieur, if only because I propose to accept your hospitality until the wedding, at least. Uh... Well, what are you waiting for? Get out! Monsieur! Bonsoir, mon ami. You may consider your business association with Mr. Smith terminé, or as we say in the lake, huh? And I think he will hesitate before embarking on an enterprise of this nature in future, at least as far as the Honorable Percy is concerned. Bonsoir. <laughs> Kind Mr. Smith joins me in urging you to accept. Well, how could we possibly thank you? Monsieur, I am already well repaid. And now, let us drink a health to the betrothed. And to the kind Mr. Smith, a most generous man at heart. Joe, what a nerve! Oh, please sit down. I'm going to join you. I'm always hungry when I'm happy. <laughs> then, mademoiselle, I hope you will always know the deepest pangs of hunger. <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Le Baron, you're a darling. There's something I want to ask you before you go. Mm. May we really come and visit you at your chateau on our honeymoon in June? Mademoiselle Christabel, I am desolate to have to tell you this. But I am the victim of the formidable disaster. This morning I received the telegram. The Chateau of Mirai has burned to the ground. Oh, how dreadful. I am so sorry. You are most kind. Everything, chateau, paintings, everything, poof. <laughs> but always in life there is a compensation. I am staying here until your wedding. You are? Mm. You are! Mm. And who knows, I may still be here when you return from your honeymoon. <laughs>